Hi book friends, I'm Erin and this is Erin Go Read. This is part two of my January wrap up via my grandmother's car. Um, long story short, you'll see it in a vlog coming up, but uh, basically I have my grandma's car instead of my own car right now. My husband is in the hospital, he's doing fine. Um, I'm in the parking lot of the hospital right now. And so basically if part two of January is gonna get wrapped up, this is how it's gonna be. And I think I'm gonna kind of do this in bits and pieces throughout the day. So I'm gonna start off with two middle grade books, one a classic and one a contemporary. So I'm gonna start off with Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass. And this to, is to start off my Down the Rabbit Hole with Alice project, which is basically a concept that I thought of about a year ago when I was reading Americana by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. And the, the idea of it happens all the time where you're reading a book and either it reminds you of something or specifically a book is mentioned. It might even be like a significant part of the story. And I have a tendency to then go and buy that book or at least I'm interested in reading that book. Um, and so I thought, well, why does, why, why don't I just follow that, um, you know, follow that trail down the rabbit hole and I'll start with Alice when I do that. So this was the first time I'd read it. I grew up on the Disney, uh, movie of it. And what I didn't know was that, or what I didn't realize, I guess, was that, um, the, the, the classic story that I knew from the Disney, um, from the Disney movie included through the looking glass. So I wasn't sure if... It was a completely different story that I didn't know about, but it's basically just kind of like part one and part two of the traditional Alice story that we knew, that we know. Um, I don't have a ton to say about it. I quite enjoyed reading it. This is an amazing addition um, to read through. There's just some fantastic um, art in here and um, like the chapter pages will look like this and some of just like the regular standard pages then has some nice, you know, decoration there um, at the bottom. I don't have a ton to say about it. Um, I think it's like a three and a half star for me. I'm glad that I read it and um, I love these additions too. I want to collect the other books uh, that are in these collections in this, in this series. And these are by, um, illustrated by Minna Lima. What's the actual edition called? Harper Design. An imprint of Harper Collins, Harper Design, illustrated by Manalina, and I know there's Peter Pan and Beauty and the Beast. I'm not sure what else um, available in these. The other book is Wildwood by Colin Malloy, who is the lead singer of the Decemberists, which I didn't realize at the time that I picked this up. This is a middle grade, and it's a whopper. It's like 600, five, about 550 pages or so. Really beautiful art. And this um, illustrations by Carson Ellis and every now and then so there's like some black and white photos throughout here and there but then every now and then so I can find one there we go there'll be like a colored page and I just love this art so what this story is is Prue is I think she's an 11 year old girl living up in a, in a Portland neighborhood and Portland Oregon she takes her baby brother out, Her she takes her brother, uh, baby brother Max out for um, like a walk. She She's pulling him um, behind her bike in a wagon, which does not sound like a very safe thing considering, especially considering the baby brother is like one. Um, but anyhow, so she was like running some errands, she drops off her library books and she takes him to the park. And while they're at the park, a murder of crows comes in, swoops down, takes Max away and she hops on her bike and she follows him, um, you know, watching the crows, follows him into, um, they, they, the crows take him into what is known as the impassable wood. Instead of telling a grown up, uh, she instead decides that she just needs to hide the fact that she, you know, let her baby brother be abducted. Not that she could have stopped it, but uh, she doesn't tell her parents and she basically sneaks back out, pretend that he, pretend, pretend she puts him to bed and he's asleep. She goes back out to save him and she runs into a classmate of hers, Curtis, who's not really a friend of hers or just in the same class. And Curtis just kind of sticks his nose into it and basically won't take no for an answer. And he goes with her into the impassable wood, also known as Wildwood. 
And then we basically just all sorts of adventure and there's all like these kind of political factions within Wildwood and they get involved in those and, and they very quickly, uh, Prue and Curtis become separated. And so through each of their uh, storylines, we kind of learn more about the various factions that uh, that are in at play within Wildwood and all within with um, you know in the in the quest is of obviously to find Max and bring him home safely. It was quite fun. Just like the writing style was fun and the the overall story was really fun, especially toward the end. It um, it really picked up. I thought there was quite a lot toward the beginning that like the first half that was just too much and I think it could have been condensed quite a bit. Um, it also, I was reading this out loud with to my husband and sometimes, you know, we'll go like a week without reading uh, just based on what our schedules are, what's happening. So um, I probably would have had a greater experience if we had read it more, uh, you know, closely condensed together. But um, yeah, I think I gave it three and a half stars. And I would certainly recommend it for um, middle, like a middle grade reader. I think they would absolutely love it. And um, I might end up passing it on to my, um, to my 10 year old niece or eventually her, her little brother, um, Sam would probably really enjoy it as well. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. Since we're doing middle grade, I'm gonna do the other middle grade. Um, that is Little Men by Louisa May Alcott. This is part of, uh, Kate Howe is doing a project, um, A Year of Louisa May. This was the third book in that. This, is, this comes after Little Women. And this is a very sweet book, but it's too sweet. It's Little Women is often criticized as being as being overly saccharine. And if you thought Little Women was overly saccharine, overly moral, this you were really not gonna like. So there are definitely elements of this that I really enjoyed. There's some nice things, but it's just it's too nice. There it's just so much moralizing and I could see and I'm not sure actually how this was initially published if it was published all at once or I think this would work really well as uh, as a serial so like you're getting because it's basically what it is it's, it's a bunch of little short stories usually having some sort of moral the kids are learning something whatever um there's the story, the bits of this actual kind of plot elements that do happen, I really enjoyed. And I think if there were far fewer of the little moralizing bits, uh, sweet stories with the boys that um, in more focus on an overall plot, it would have been more successful. Also, it's kind of a very tenuous relationship with little women. Joe, sorry, I'll tell you what this is even about. So Joe and the professor are now married and they're running their house for boys. And um, they're two boys and uh, Meg and John's son and daughter um, are there. I wasn't ever quite sure if, uh, I think it's Daisy, the girl, if she's actually living there like the other boys are if, or if she lives at home but she only comes during the day, but she's definitely there, she's part of the story. And then we get another girl eventually in the story as well. And. There's very little of like the Joe March that we really know. She seems like Marmy 2.0. And other than her kind of, she really empathizes with the kids who are a little bit more troublemakers or a girl who is a bit more of a tomboy and wants to play with the boys. So you get like little bits of that, but really you could read this and have no idea. You, you could read this without ever having read Little Women there is um, kind of a larger family element that happens, but it uh, is not very impactful because you're not really spending any time with those characters. The other characters uh, in the family um, are just very brief mention mentions. Lori pops in a couple times. I would have loved it if there were more elements of the greater March family, more time spent there and more carryover of like who they are, who, who they were as, as children when they knew them in Little Women um, and who they are now as adults and less of just the saccharine, sweet, moralizing um, bits with the kids. I don't know, 2.5 stars, I think maybe. Ugh, that's hard to say, but yeah, I think I'm gonna have to go 2.5 stars for Little Men. 
probably really sweet. If you're a kid, probably really sweet. Um, if you're a Christian family looking for a book uh, to read as a family, there's lots of like teaching moments in here. And um, that might be exactly what you're looking for. But, you know, as an adult reader, this certainly does not have the same uh, appeal that Little Women does. Okay, so that's part one of the part two of my January wrap up. Okay, now for the two books that I really, really enjoyed uh, toward the end of January and kind of sent me into, no, sent me into a bit of a reading slump for the beginning of February. So the first one is Five Days of Fog by Anna Freeman. Uh, if you saw my last vlog, you would have seen me reading this and basically hating that I had to do anything other than read this book. This was one of those books that was really enjoyable every time I sat down to read it. I wanted to know what was gonna happen with the characters um, enjoyed, really enjoyed the atmosphere of this. This takes place, I think, in the 50s in London. During this time, there was an actual historic, like, week, five days of this really heavy, thick fog that just kind of stopped everything in London because like, you couldn't even drive. People were, like, driving into the river and terrible things were happening. So it takes place during that time period, and it follows Flory, who is the daughter of the Queen of the Cutters, which is a female gang in London and they have a lot of clout. Flory's mother is uh, has been in jail and she gets out of jail, um, I think on the first day here of the fog. And then uh, Flory has a relationship. She's wanting to get out of, of the gang life. She wants to go straight and just live a normal life with her second cousin, uh, who she wants to marry. And uh, the cousin is from kind of the side of the family that's not really into the, the criminal business and uh, they just kind of have to deal with the criminal element of their family. Um, his mother um, kind of has to, ends up ha kind of having to be involved, um, but they're kind of like the straight side of the family. And um, she just wants to be able to get away. And so basically we follow this five day period um, of time where uh, things are going on within the, the girl gang. Uh, her mom comes home and then she's trying to get out. And so we're just trying to figure out um, what is it to become of everyone, essentially. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I gave this four stars. It, um, super high enjoyment level. It just didn't have kind of like the emotional punch that, uh, like the emotional connection that I'm really looking for in a five-star book. And speaking of five-star books, I have one. This is Dear Edward from Anne Napolitano. I absolutely loved this book. I literally hugged this book when I finished it. It was so just... Loved it. Edward is, I think, a 12-year-old boy. His family is moving from, I think, New York to LA. And the plane crashes. It's not a spoiler, that's like the premise of the book. The plane crashes and he is the only survivor. So his brother, his parents, and everyone else on the plane are dead. And then he gets taken in by his aunt and her husband. And um, basically he has to recover from the, you know, his physical injuries. He has a traumatic brain injury, he has PTSD, and then there's also kind of the media attention and all, and he establishes a close relationship with a, a neighbor girl um, across the street from his aunt and uncle, um, the, the girl and her mom, and they play a large part in the story. And it's basically just, we're just watching Edward, who was Eddie before the crash, and now it's like, he's a new, he's a kind of a new person. This is before the crash was Eddie, after the crash is Edward. And we basically just see him, how he gets along in life and the difficulties uh, that he has. And I was just so emotionally invested in this book um, and I absolutely loved it. And it fully put me into a reading slump afterwards, just nothing was gonna hold up to it. And uh, I could certainly see myself rereading this. Maybe I'll reread it. Maybe I'll do an audio book the second time around. But yeah, I just absolutely loved it. And Edward is just the type of character who you just want to like take under your wings and protect and love him and give him all of the, the love and attention that uh, he needs and that he deserves. So five stars for Dear Edward. So these were the final five books that I finished in the month of January. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. See you around the tubes.